Hey, it's the iPhone 7. Now, I promise we're going to talk about the headphone jack, but let's start with something fun. The iPhone 7 is water resistant. It's not quite as water resistant as Samsung's phones, but it's still not going to freak out if you get it wet, and that's awesome. The new iPhone 7 and 7 Plus look more or less exactly like the iPhone 6 and 6 Plus from 2014. There are some small differences like stereo speakers, tweaked antenna lines, and a bigger camera bump, but the biggest change in the new iPhone is the removal of the headphone jack. It comes with lightning ear pods and a dongle for using your old headphones, which costs $9 if you lose it. Apple's forcing a big change by taking away the headphone jack, and the ecosystem around that change is pretty immature. This is all going to be really inconvenient while everyone adapts and builds adapters. Apple's also pushing wireless audio really hard, and I got to try out a pre-production set of AirPods, the new wireless earbuds. I can't review them since they're prototypes, but they worked pretty well, even though every single person I showed them to thought the case looked like dental floss. Apple says it needed to take out the headphone jack so it could add all kinds of other new features to the iPhone 7, like better cameras, the Taptic Engine haptic feedback system, water resistance, and maybe most importantly, a bigger battery. So the real question is whether all that stuff is worth it, and whether it's worth upgrading the iPhone 7 while the world around us is still adjusting the biggest I.O. change in years. The iPhone 7 is one of the most beautiful, refined designs Apple's ever made, particularly the two black ones where the antenna lines blend right into the sides of the body. But let's be honest, the second you stick this thing into a case, it looks just like the iPhone 6. The Galaxy Note 7 might have problems with exploding, but from a visual design perspective, Samsung's definitely pulled ahead this generation. Inside the case, these are completely new phones though, with a bunch of interesting ideas. Take the home button, for instance. It doesn't move anymore. Instead, it's totally solid. The Taptic Engine makes it feel like a click when you push down on it. If the phone is off, it doesn't move at all. You can set it to three different levels of feedback, but none of them feel like a real button. I'm okay with this, but other people who've tried my phone really don't like it. You're going to have to try it yourself to understand it. The Taptic Engine also adds all kinds of other fun feedback to the phone. When you drop the notification shade down, the phone bumps a little bit. It's way more useful than 3D Touch, which I always thought was a gimmick and still hasn't really caught on. The iPhone 7 and 7 Plus also have the new A10 Fusion processor. It's fast, but it wasn't noticeably faster than my iPhone 6S Plus during my boring day-to-day -day use. I'm sure high-end games and other apps will eventually take advantage of this new processor, but that'll take some time. The real news with the A10 Fusion is that it has four cores, two of which are special low-power cores. That means a phone can use less power and you're not stressing it, saving battery life. In about a week of use, I got 8 to 10 hours a day of battery life with the iPhone 7 and about 10 to 12 hours of battery life with the 7 Plus. That's pretty much what Apple claims, but depending on how much you use your phone during the day, it could be just the same as the 6S. The other big news of the iPhone 7 is the improved camera. It's an improvement over the 6S, but it is not a huge leap, and it's about the same as the Galaxy S7. The front camera on both new iPhones has been upgraded to a 7 megapixel sensor, while the rear camera on the regular iPhone 7 has a faster f1.8 lens and optical image stabilization, both of which improve low light performance. And the 7 Plus has a radical dual camera system on the back with two 12 megapixel shooters, a wide angle lens and a telephoto lens. The two cameras work together as a single system so you can smoothly zoom from 1x to 10x. And eventually Apple will enable some fancy depth tricks that'll blur the background like a much fancier camera. Here's the thing, the camera is only a little bit better. Day to day, you might not notice it, but at the edges of performance in low light with extreme detail, it is noticeably better. The major tells are that the 7's wider aperture lens leads to a slightly softer background and colors are a little bit more vibrant straight off the camera. And where you'll really see that increased vibrancy is on the iPhone 7's screen, which can display a much wider range of colors than the 6S. It's very noticeable. Not only is the screen warmer than the 6S display, but photos look amazing on it. You can definitely tell a 7 photo apart from a 6S when you look at them on the 7. Other phones with dual cameras, like the Honor 8, let you do very impressive focus tricks. Apple says a forthcoming software update will enable a similar depth effect for portraits. But for now, what you get is the ability to switch between 1X and 2X modes by tapping a button and digitally zooming between them and then up to 10X. Front cameras are almost more important than rear cameras in our Snapchat world, and the iPhone 7's front camera is excellent. It's not quite as wide angle as Samsung's cameras, but it's bright, it's sharp, and the retina flash is still a terrific idea. 
The new iPhones run iOS 10, which is a terrific upgrade over iOS 9. It has a slick new version of iMessage with all kinds of new features, a new version of Siri that can be extended by third-party apps, better integration with smart home devices, and a ton of other new stuff. Of course, you can get iOS 10 on any recent iPhone, so it's not worth buying a whole new phone just to get it, but it's definitely worth upgrading in general. The world just isn't ready for the iPhone 7. The most interesting feature of the dual camera doesn't ship at launch, apps haven't been updated to use that Taptic engine, the entire ecosystem of new headphones and adapters required to make use of lightning and wireless audio is just getting off the ground. Right now, using the iPhone 7 in case feels just like using an iPhone 6S with a weirder home button and more dongles. It's kind of like Apple shipped a prototype of next year's iPhone disguised as an iPhone 6. That's not all bad. The iPhone 7 is a terrific phone with a great camera and a gorgeous display. If you need a new phone right now, sure, buy one. The iPhone 7 starts at $649 for 32 gigs of storage and goes all the way up to $969 for a 7 Plus with 256 gigabytes of storage. But unless you're excited to live that early adopter life, you won't be missing out on much if you wait another year. Get up. Perfect. So you want us pointing at the camera. Hey! Hey! Uh, so much fun shooting. So good. One more, the brightness needs to come down.